What's up you people? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Ida and today I'm going to be eating this pineapple on camera. I've seen people do it on the internet. There's a right and wrong way to eat pineapple so I'm about to try for myself. And also I'm going to be talking about, um, oh let me say this first. So tomorrow is my birthday. Happy birthday to me. I'm turning 27. 27 people. And so I sat down and I was thinking if I had a chance to talk um, to a younger version of myself, what would I tell them? You know, and so that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. And if you're younger than me, if you're 26 and below, this would probably be helpful. And even if you're older than me, this is gonna be helpful to the future Ida as well because, you know, you'll see how, what I'm talking about. And anyways, um, let's see how this goes with this pineapple. <laughs> I'm supposed to be plucking it like a uh, I'm gonna just show you anyways I wrote a couple of things down that I would tell a younger version of myself and so let's get straight to it now well that was way way too easy I might it's because I already cut the top I don't know no I have a paper bag down there so I can trash it mm. The first thing I'd like to tell a younger version of myself, yo guys, this is way too easy. Like it's just coming, wow. It's just coming apart. Okay, this one's not as easy. Oh, the juice. Oh, man. Wow. By the end of this video, I will not have any lipstick left. But then, this is so worth it. Anyway, the first thing I'll tell a younger version of myself is you are beautiful. Act like you know. Treat your body like you know you're beautiful. Treat yourself like you know you're beautiful, you know? And this is a... Uh, and the way you treat your body, the things you put in your body, like this amazing sweet pineapple exercising um, um taking care of not just how you look on the outside not just makeup and cute hair and whatever no you want to take care of your inside the things you know you intake like i said the food you eat the things you drink don't just drink alcohol mm? speaking of which i'm not even drinking today which is a trademark in my videos because i drank enough for the last I mean, from the last video, I drank enough for this video and that. So uh, we're detoxing over here. Anyway, um, another thing I would tell my um, younger version of myself is listen more. Don't just hear, listen. And what do I mean by this? Um, I, my, my book is right down here. That's why I'm looking down. Um, it's be slow to respond. You know, some people just are like, they're not, they're not listening, they hear. They're just hearing you and quickly responding back. No, I would tell my younger self, listen more. These people who are talking to you probably know way more than you do at this age. You know, so listen more. And I'm telling you, I'm 27 now, and these are the things that I am doing, currently practicing. I listen more. Okay? Another thing, dreams do come true. That's one thing people don't tell us growing up. They're just like, what do you want to do when you grow up? They don't really affirm you and tell you that dreams do come true. But I'm here to tell you, dreams do come true. If you're thinking, you know, when I grow up, I work hard and become this and this, dreams do come true. But what you need to do is work towards that goal. You don't want to be an engineer, but you're studying law. Doesn't make sense. You don't want to, you want to be an actress, but you are shy and can't even do public speaking there's some realities we need to check you know so yeah dream, dreams do come true um work hard another thing would be if you can't change it honey don't waste time worrying about it you can't change it then why are you worried if you can change it you have zero control Cindy or that means you have zero control like what for example like me now, um, this is who I am. I have a big ass forehead. 
yeah, sister forehead, eh? I could either embrace my forehead and enjoy being beautiful with this forehead, or I could spend time worrying about it. But I can't change it, so you have to accept it. You can't change it. Don't waste time worrying about it. Another thing I would like to tell my future self is, I mean my younger self, if I had a chance, is slow the fuck down, slow down. I remember being um, 18 and it's getting harder as I go. Oh man, the juice though. Could this be considered a mukbang challenge because I'm eating and talking? Could it, could it, maybe. Um, the things that, um, I remember being 18, that's what I was trying to say. I remember being 18 and wanting to be 20, 25, 27, so bad. Like, I don't think I even enjoyed being 18 because I had a plan for life. And I'm not saying having a plan is a bad thing, but having a practical plan that works with you at the place you are in life at the moment. Does that make sense? This is what I mean. You're 18, do the things an 18 year old does. You're 20, worry about the things a 20 year old worries about. Don't try and rush life and be like, ah, acting 27 when you're 18. I remember I had a whole plan. I was like, I'll get married, I'll have children. By the time I'm 27, I'll have at least two or three. <laughs> Jokes on me. But that's what I'll tell myself. Slow down, enjoy life. You'll never be this age again. Can you imagine? Like you have to enjoy and embrace it because you're never gonna be this age again. Don't waste it, okay? So act to your age. Wow, that came out harsh. But what I mean is act your age, enjoy it, slow down. It's okay, it's okay, you have time, okay? Another thing I'd tell a younger version of myself is celebrate your victories, girl. Even the really small ones. They are what make you who you are and they help write your story. For example, you just finished high school. You went into college or you decided college is not for you and you went and looked for a job. You found a job. You're working, you're making your own money, you move into your own apartment. That's a celebrate. I mean, that's a small victory you need to celebrate. You know, um, you got a small promotion at your job. Celebrate that victory, even if it's a job that, you know, you're only seeing yourself there for maybe a year or two before you venture into bigger things. It's still a win. A win is a win, no matter how small. So celebrate your small victories. Another thing is, mm -hmm, don't be afraid to jump. So by this I mean, there are opportunities that come your way when you're not even ready. You know what I mean? Like for example, I'll give you a very good example. Aida. So when I started acting, that's all I knew how to do, act, right? And then I got into a job and then this opportunity opened up where they needed somebody to write. Um, Say, I, I, I don't know, man. I was so afraid because I had never written before, not even written for TV. My God, that was a big deal, you know? I had never written before, so it was very scary for me, but I jumped. Leap of faith. I jumped. I took this opportunity. I said, you know what? I'm going to try. If I fail, see, I failed. See, I'll just go continue acting. Kwani, what's I'll, I've not lost anything. I'll still have the thing that I know how to do and continue doing that. But what if I succeed? I'll have two things on my resume now. I can write and I can act, you know? So don't be afraid to jump. And anyway, that's how I, I, I started writing. I wrote one script, it was brilliant, according to my producer at the time. She asked for another one, and another one, and, another, and, and then that made me who I am now. At least now I can write. I know my creativity can be, you know, spread in different um, areas of this career that I'm in. All right, so. Another thing I'm looking down here is the people who love you don't see your flaws the way you do. So, sometimes we're so hard on ourselves. You know, treat yourself like, you see the people who love you, the way they treat you. Can you treat yourself like that? Because sometimes you get so hard on yourself, you're like, no, I'm doing this wrong, I'm not so good at this. But the people who love you don't even see that. Ama, you go somewhere like, 
like me right now, I'm like, okay, okay, this dress is showing some flab, like I've gained some weight. I'm like, but the people who love me for me don't even care about all that. It's because I'm really just like um, hard on myself. I'm like, I need to go back and work out, which is a fact. But what I'm trying to say is treat yourself like the people who love you treat you. Make sense? I hope it does make sense. The people who love you, don't worry about the little stuff that you worry about as much. So treat yourself, be kind to yourself. Um, another thing would be, oh gosh, it's really hard though. Oh. Sorry, I, mean, I decided to wear a yellow dress so I can do this together. Like the, everything I'm, I just be yellow and green and my background, I try to like make it so plain, but a dash of yellow over there. I know you can see it, it's a painting, but uh. mm. one more thing, it's life. I wrote down, it's life. Sometimes all you have to do is just keep swimming. What do I mean by that? Happiness is not a destination, it's a journey. Let that sink in. Happiness is not a destination, it's a journey. Today you smile, tomorrow you cry, enjoy the ride. So people think that happiness is a destination. At least to make happiness, pop, we've packed our car, we're living in happiness. No, it's a journey. You know, and, and it's life, it changes. Don't be, don't, don't go crazy looking for happiness, searching for happiness in places you can't find happiness. Like, as soon as you understand it's not a destination, it's a journey, it gets much, much easier. It gets so much easier for you because Sometimes we, life happens and life becomes very difficult and we let ourselves swallow and cry and blah, blah, blah. But when you realize that ah, it's only for a moment, tomorrow I'll be laughing. Yeah, do that. I mean, it's life. Just keep swimming. You know that reference from Finding Nemo and then Finding Dory. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. From Ellen DeGeneres. All right, whoa. Another thing is, don't look for a partner who makes you happy. Wow. Some of these things are deep. Hmm? Don't look for a partner who makes you happy. What are you saying, Ida? Did you let that sort of sink in? What am I saying? Don't look for a partner who makes you happy. Look for a partner who wants to see you grow. Wow. Yo, you guys, I'm smart. I'm not, I'm not, okay, I'm dropping everything now. But my point is, look for a partner who wants to see you become the best version of yourself. And that way, happiness is inevitable. Some, some of us look for people to complete us, to make us happy, like, you know, oh, he makes me happy. It's great if somebody makes you smile, don't get me wrong, but don't look, don't go searching for someone to complete you and make you happy. It doesn't work like that. If you find somebody who is interested in your growth and seeing you flourish, then happiness comes in. Wow, that's deep, man. You know, I have my plate down here because to connect all the juice that I am squeezing out of this pineapple. <sighs> Yo, whoever came up with this thing of eating pineapple this way, you're a genius. You are such a, de a, a genius. One more thing I'll tell a younger version of me is do good and move on. Do good, move on. He, um, if you're touching a life, don't touch a life and then... Oh, so bad. Don't touch a life and then go preach to everybody. Touch a life and move on. Also, don't forget that karma is a bitch. So be good to people, be good. Even if some, some of us say, oh, this was, maybe you can be misunderstood, you can be misunderstood, that's just beyond you, you can't do anything about that. But you do your part and move on, like be good, like just spread positive vibes into the world and the world will bring that back in return. Be good, do good, be kind, smile, and share. No matter how little you have, you can always have enough to share, okay? 
yes, younger either or whoever's watching this that's younger than me. All right, another thing is never stop learning. You know, it's what, okay, let me say this first of all. Read a book, go to seminars, because learning is equals to growth. And what is the goal here in life? To grow. So never stop learning. I know we get to a point you think, oh, I'm at the peak of my career. Like, what else do I need to know? Or I'm at the peak of my education. What else do I need to know? And learning that doesn't necessarily mean in that route, books and work and everything. Sometimes when in life, um, maybe you know how to do something I don't know how to do. And I'll sit down, it doesn't matter how old or young you are, I'll sit down and let you teach me. And then this way I have grown because I know the things I know plus that one thing that you've taught me. So never stop learning. Learning is a good thing. Learning is growth. And that's what we're aiming for over here. Like right now, I just learned how to eat this pineapple like this. I know it's trying me at this point. Oh, I learned how to eat a pineapple this way. Another thing I tell myself, another thing that I have come to learn and I've come to see in almost my everyday life hmm, is trust your gut. Some people say it's your conscience, they say that, some people say the Holy Spirit, I don't know why, but trust that thing, that still small voice, trust your gut. Sometimes we get into things, you're like, ah, it's okay, but something is holding you back, it's like, I, I don't know if I should be doing it. But something's really pulling you back, but you're like, ah, it's okay, let me just go. Mm -mm, don't go. That's how you end up in situations that you're not supposed to be into. Car wrecks, you get arrested, or bad relationships, or bad jobs. Don't do it. Trust your gut. That small, still voice inside of you that seems to be slowing you down when you meet somebody new and you're like, oh, I like you. But something in, in, in the back of your head is like, oh, mm, why? Trust that something. That something knows better than you do. So trust your gut. It's one thing that I've learned to do growing up. And now I trust my gut. I trust my instincts, uh, my sixth sense, my the Holy Spirit, my conscious. I listen to that small voice and I trust it. And I've never regretted since doing it. Another thing would be serve your community. I've done quite a bit of uh, volunteer work, even at church and everything, just giving time. And I wrote this down and I said, um, give your time and expect nothing in return. This is so much pleasure, oh, there's so much pleasure found in this, you know, and it's true. Giving your time or just helping the needy, going to children's homes, children, children's home, children's home, children's homes, like orphanages. <laughs> I know I had to say that four times. I felt like it sounded wrong. Um, give your time. Just spend time, you know, with those people. People who are more needy than you are. Or just in your society. Collecting trash around with your peers as you hang out and, you know, tell stories. Cleaning your, I don't know, something. Giving your time and expecting nothing in return. There's so much satisfaction that comes from this. And... I don't know, I can't explain it anymore. It's just satisfaction that no human being can give you. You just search for that satisfaction yourself, you know? Another thing will be, say yes to new opportunities. You'll learn in the process. I'll give you an example of my job. How I started acting. Well, not started acting, but started writing. I just told you I was, a, I was an actor, period. I didn't know anything else. Couldn't direct, couldn't do anything. I mean, of course I wanted to grow, like I'm telling you, I listened, I watched and all these things, but an opportunity arose. So we needed new writers, not actually writers. We only had, at, at some point, we lost so many people. We only had one writer. You guys know him as Charlie, the drunkard, mother-in-law. He's my pops. <laughs> His name is Patrick. He's the only one who was writing for us at some season in time for mother-in-law and my boss was so frustrated because you can't guy it's such a big program and you shoot every day you can't only have one writer like even him he'll burn out so my boss was looking for new writers i just went up to her and told her hey um i could guy this my apple i could write you a script and let you um read it 
If it wasn't fine, if you don't like it, what do I have to lose, you know? I jumped into this new opportunity with zero, zero training, zero experience. I just jumped into it. And then the script that I wrote was um, part one and part two. But I didn't bother to write part two because it's so long. I had to, like you see, I talk a lot. So of course my scripts are long. <laughs> so it was part one and part two. But, you know, I had to cut it short and just submit, submit part one because I didn't know if she was going to be interested in part two. So I didn't even bother. I gave her the script, she read it. Of course she proofreads and then she edits some things that she doesn't think is, are, are gonna be necessary to be on TV. And then she was like, so Ida, we are shooting this next week. Can you bring me part two? Ooh, wait, what? Wait, excuse me. Say that again. Louder, cause I couldn't hear you. In fact, say that louder for the people at the back. Ate, you want part two of my script? Like he, like, you know, and it was a big deal. So I did, I wrote part two. Um, I wrote part two, I submitted part two, people loved it, my colleagues loved it, and they're happy for me, that's, you know, that was important, they were like, man, Kumba, you can write. We did part one, we did part two, it was amazing, I watched it on TV, I was like, what? I'm a writer. And that's how I jumped into that opportunity, and that's how I started writing for my, my show, Mother-in-Law, and then I was even um, asked to write for Tahiti High, which I thought was amazing. I loved Tahiti High. So... It was easy to write for one. So you see, my point here is, I jumped into this new opportunity with zero experience, zero nothing, zero training. What, what, had I said no, I said, I mean, I can't write, so it's fine, just look for somebody else. I wouldn't have been where I'm at now, you know, with all the things I've learned so far, I wouldn't have been. So, yes. New opportunities, open, you know, it's fine, learn in the process. It's a job, you learn in the process, you know? So don't say no to opportunities. Another thing would be, this is relationship-wise. I know I dated a guy who I shouldn't have dated before. And let me first give you the point and then I can give you this story. If this man or this woman is mean to waiters, security, this is why they tell you don't talk and, and, and eat at the same time because I almost choked. I mean, if this man is um, rude to waiters, security guards, people who, who can't do anything for him, like people of lower class than him, that's a red flag. And I'm telling dear younger me this, dear younger Ida, you should have known. Because I ended up dating this person who was just so mean to waiters, like, so... <laughs> I learned the hard way. If he's mean to a waiter that he doesn't know, it's just a matter of time that he shows you who he really is even with you. So don't do it. People, you know it says a lot, people who treat people who can't do anything for them really badly, it says a lot about who they are. Okay, and again, I'm telling my younger self, if, I had the, 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 I don't know if it, by any miraculous way, I could go back. Man, this information would be so helpful to me. And I hope it is to you. If he treats people who are of a lower class than him badly, it's only a matter of time. Don't get, don't, don't allow it. Don't allow it, okay? Another example would be, um, wow, all this juice. Hmm. Another example would be, you see these um, people, maybe even, let me give racist, racism for, a, for an example. People who are like, you know, I don't like black people, but you, you are a good one. Ah, excuse me. What do you mean? I'm also black. We're in the same category, Cindy. Hmm? I'm black too? They, there's, no, there's no difference that he, those people are bad, but I'm not. Why? You know, that's a red flag. So, in case you find yourself in a situation where you're trying to date this person, but they are mean to people of a lower class than you are, or, excuse me, people of your race, but you are an exception, don't do it. Red flag, do not do it. Mm -mm. Don't try so hard on people. Some people, it's, it's okay, you give them a chance, it didn't work out. Don't try so hard on people. Focus on the things you can change, but people are not one of them. So you can't change people, okay? Period, period. Another thing is, <laughs> The scars that you have, they could be physical, could be emotional, 
this car is there's a song god there's a song i can think of i mean this i forget the song but it says the scars it's something to the effect the scars that we have tell better stories in the future so it's fine you went through something that hurt you could be physical could be emotional mentally it's fine to heal but don't worry about the scar you went through that for a reason so it's a story for you to tell in the future change lives and touch lives and use your story to change lives that's a very good thing you know no matter how old you are it's never too late to live your life's purpose like it's never too late if you you realized you are in the wrong career and you're 40 you're 50 it's never too late Turn around, do something that you've always wanted to do. If you realize you've been in the wrong city, it's never too late. Pack your bags, move in the wrong country, in the wrong relationship, in the wrong group of friends. You've been doing drugs. I uh, realized, wow, well, I'll die. It's not the right thing for me. It's never too late for you to make a, a whole turnaround. Just pack your bags, move over. Like, you know, this is what you are doing and it was not right. Pack your bags, move over here. Where are you supposed to be? It's never too late, okay? Another thing would be ask questions. Period. The younger version of myself was so afraid to ask questions. Not even in class, even in just real life. Somebody gives you an offer, maybe a job offer. They say, do you have any questions? You're like, ah, no, it sounds okay, it sounds good. Ask questions, it's fine. That's one thing I just, it's, it, it sounds very like common sense, right? You should ask, but some people don't. I never used to. I'd be like, yeah, maybe whatever they say because they know better than I do, you know? It's fine. The whatever the word is just goes to the truth at this point. But no, ask questions. It's okay. In fact, it makes you look even wiser. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not very wise. Yeah. I'm starting to really enjoy this um, sit down videos. Just I don't know because I guess I'm not doing too much work, and on this one I'm eating. So these are two of my favorite things: not doing anything and eating, you know, and recording, being on camera. Three of my favorite things. Thanks for hanging out with me. This was really just a hangout video. Um, hope you guys stayed. I hope it's not too long. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good one and try eating a pineapple this way. God, I almost finished the whole pineapple. It's so good though. It's a little messy, but it's very, very good. I love you guys. I'll see you in my next video and be kind to one another. And then the generous says that, but when you say it over and over, you're like, you know what? It makes sense. Be kind to one another. Smile, share your own kind of beautiful. You know, the world needs that. We'll see you on my next video. Don't forget to subscribe. I said, I, uh... We'll see you on my next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Love you guys.